Rolex are known to be a conservative brand. That is, they evolve their watches and designs and gradually change them to get to where they want to be. And then they don't make drastic changes to how the watches look. This also helps with collectability of watches once they are discontinued. That is, the watches maintain their iconic looks, yet there are finer details and changes that can be seen and easily noticed in the collector's world. After all, the devil is in the details. And it's these details where the new model reference for basically any Rolex watch separates itself from the outgoing model reference. So while the model is replaced on the Rolex website, in the collector's world, it never really replaces it. It rather only complements it. The new release model for Rolex Daytona reference 126503 to commemorate the 60th anniversary is no different. And while from distance, it maintains all the iconic looks and elements that make it a timeless watch that it is. There are fine changes and differences in the new release model that make it entirely different watch from the outgoing reference 116503. Starting off with the dial, the dial text that used to be in gilt color to complement the yellow gold is now replaced with the white text. While aesthetically it may be subjective, the new text is more prominent and obvious so the branding stands out bolder and louder. Same is the case with the graduations at the dial periphery, which are all in white now. If you notice the chapter ring around the subdials, there's a yellow gold tone, broad rim around all the subdials now, which was not the case in the previous reference 116. This gold rim arguably makes the new reference a little more interesting as you can now spot the subdials from afar. The subdials accordingly have the text and numerals in black as opposed to the previous reference where this was in gilt color on the black subdials with only golden boundaries. The Arbor indices are now longer and narrower as opposed to previous reference indices that were shorter and broader. Another difference which you can use to spot the new reference is that there's a printed Rolex crown just below the 6 o'clock Arbor marker which was never there in any of the previous references. While for the stainless models, the dials in the new reference looks more roomier and have more space. It's arguably not quite the case with the two-tone models and that's because of the subdial rims that make the new reference in style a little more sportier and busier with less empty space. If you compare it side by side with the older reference, you will see a lot of black dial space and lesser contrasting elements than the new reference. I personally think that the dial rims in the new model make this two-tone model more aligned with the stainless models 126500 in terms of aesthetics and looks. So now with the new reference, regardless of whether you are wearing a two-tone Daytona or stainless Daytona, the looks are all identical. One of the biggest differences the new two-tone Daytona has with the new stainless models is that there's no rim around the bezel, which I showed and explained in my review for the stainless model 126500, as linked on the top right corner of your screen. As a two-tone reference comes with a bezel made from precious metal and not of ceramic, it obviously wouldn't have made sense for Rolex to install a steel rim around it. So they intelligently chamfered the bezel edges and you can still see a polished bezel tip all around the yellow gold bezel. Talk about aesthetics, engineering and intelligence, all combined in one place. The previous generation Daytona 116 didn't have symmetrical lugs, which I explained previously in my videos. This is another area of refinement, where the new reference model comes with symmetrical lugs on both sides of the case. There are other finer differences between the new model compared to the older and outgoing 116 model, 
which I captured in great detail in my comparison video recently. I've linked the comparison video on the top right corner of your screen. In terms of size, the dimensions of the two-tone Daytona are all identical to the stainless models, which I also captured in my review for stainless model as linked on the top right corner. To summarize, the bezel outer extremity is under 39 mils, the lug to lug is just over 47.5 mils, the case thickness is a touch over 12 mils. You would think that due to the lug to lug, the new reference wears larger than the older. It actually doesn't and I've explained this in my comparison video too. Rolex make watches that are known to remain iconic, timeless and future-proof. They have stood the test of times and while Rolex Daytona was one of the world's most sought-after watches decades ago, it still is the case. And if anything has changed, it's become from very hard watch to get to an almost impossible watch to get at retail. When you put them on the wrist, you instantly recognize why they are so special and iconic and why everyone wants them. With the new release 2-tone Daytona, there are aesthetical and technological improvements and refinements. So the trend will continue, I think so. Then with the new aesthetics with similar looks to the stainless models, will the 2-tone Daytona also gain more popularity and catch up on the price difference between them and the stainless variations. I will leave it for you to share your opinion in the comments section below.